That's God's seven Bibles. Amen. God's seven Bibles, seven English Bibles. So English was the seventh language that he chose to translate the Word of God into. And then we got seven English translations, and the seventh one was this one. Isn't that something? All right, watch this. Nine in the Bible is a number for fruit or fruitfulness. All right, let's go ahead and read Galatians chapter 5. We started out there. I want to show you this. Five in the Bible, I mean, excuse me, nine in the Bible is the number for fruit or fruitfulness. And the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse number 22, says, But the fruit of the Spirit is, now watch this, the fruit, not fruits, fruit. Watch this. Let's count them. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against us there is no law. Nine things. Nine things make up the fruit of the Spirit. Out of them, number one is love. I heard somebody say this well. You ain't got love, you ain't got nothing. That applies to a marriage. That applies to a home. And that applies to a church. Yep. You ain't got love, you ain't got nothing. You ever read that thing in the Bible, love covered with multitude of sins? You know what that's talking about? You love somebody, you forgive them. That's right. Yep. Their past don't keep coming to you. That's right. Uh, watch, watch this now. Then we got love, and then we got joy. Uh, you know why these contemporary churches started doing what they're doing? Can I clue you in on it? Because all of us walking around like this. Mm -hmm. They said, we've got to find a way to cheer everybody up. <laughs> Why don't we pray and do that and get God to? Ah, never mind. Let's get a rock band going instead. Yeah. See, joy. They try to fake that stuff. But you got to have real... You know what joy is? Jesus first, others second, yourself last. Uh -huh. Yep. Always putting others ahead of yourself and Jesus above them. Love, joy. Here it is. Peace. You know why people go on vacation? They hunt that right there. Mm-hmm. They're hunting peace. They're trying to find peace anywhere they can. You want know people get up here in a liquor store and buy liquor? They're hunting peace. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. They put up with anything. See, the pastor of a church has got to learn to put up with people, and people's got to learn to put up with the pastor. I mean, we ain't arrived by no stretch of the imagination. That's right. Thank God for the folks down at the First Baptist Church of Brickhouse Road, where I'm pastor at. <laughs> it was really Victory Baptist Church. We're the only Baptist church down there, so I call us the First Baptist Brickhouse Road. It kind of gives us a little bit of status right there. I don't know what sounds good, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But I, I thank God for that people. Because you know what? I've had to get back up and preach things that I knew I was wrong on years ago. And I get up and take it on the chin and say, oh, by the way, I was wrong about that. Mm -hmm. You know why? It lets them know that I'm not God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if they don't start worshiping me, boy, we'll be in great shape. Yeah. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. And say, I put up with them because I preach something and half of them get it and half of them don't. So I have to go back and preach it again, I guess. But the average Baptist has to hear something 50 times to understand it. Mm -hmm. So maybe if we can come back and do this the next 50 years, once a year, you'll get it in oh, 50 years, right? Or i tell you what, it'd be better. After I get done tonight, your pastor can preach it the next 49 Sundays, and y'all can have it by the end of the year. I mean, it would be great. Look here. So we got long-suffering, and here it is, gentleness. Gentleness. Uh, there's a lot of preachers, they preach hard, and I thank God for them, but you can't act like that to people one-on-one -on -one when you're trying to win with Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, we're in the mountains of North Carolina. You know how you do up here? You spit at them while you're preaching on them, right? You know what you call that? Hepping them, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, you can't spit in their face while you're witnessing to them. Yeah. That's right. Be gentle with them. Realize that what you say may or may not help them, and what you say may turn them away, so you got to be very careful of that gentleness. When you're dealing with church folks, gentleness. And then here's one, goodness. You know what goodness is? That's when you find a guy that, that needs some apple butter, amen, you send him some. Ain't right, brother? <laughs> say amen right there. Look here. <laughs> You find somebody with some don't have apple butter and don't have access to good things like that, and you send a couple back with them. Isn't that great? <laughs> Amen. That's goodness, brother. Hey, I'll tell you, listen. If I find out you, that you're down in your back and you can't do things, and you got a mean old lawnmower that takes 50 times pulling it to crank it, well, we ought to go over and cut grass, have a grass cut ministry. We find somebody that, that the board just fall off the side of their house and say, what's wrong with them? They say, well, they ain't got no ladder. Well, take them a ladder. Yeah. Goodness. Right? You got three cars in the garage, and you don't ever drive but two of them, and one of them's kind of sitting there, and you you, you don't want to sell it because you don't you didn't want to trade it in because you realize if you trade it in, you wouldn't get nothing for it. So I'll just keep this thing later. And then you find out somebody needs a car. Well, guess what you do? Take them that one. Yeah. Idle and all. Yeah. I watched a man come to my church one time. I'll never forget this. He comes driving in this Cadillac. He says, this old Cadillac here. He says, this thing's like brand new. He said, I got it. He said, God bless me with it. 
He said, but um, he said, I've had it a couple weeks now. He said, but I was looking at our prayer list the other night, and I heard you say that that missionary has come back home from the field in this foreign country. I said, yes, sir. He said, he said he's not going to be able to go back. They lost their visa, right? I said, right. He said, well, tell him because he lost his visa, he's gained a Cadillac. Amen. <laughs> How many people you know give away wow. Cadillacs? That missionary got that car. He got over here in America. Got got some bricks. Know what to do with his life. And he goes over. And he's he's pastor a church down in Georgia, back where he goes to church at. One of the guys in the Bible Institute we go to school with. Guess what he needs? Mysteriously, he needs a car. Guess which car he's driving tonight? Like kind of how funny how that, that car has just been doing that the whole time. Amen. Hmm. Now, here's goodness. There's goodness right there. And then he says this: goodness, faith. Let me tell you how not to run this church. Tell you how not to do it. Donuts for Jesus. Yeah. Car washes for Jesus. So we're going to send the kids on a mission trip. We've got to get up some money. How about get around this altar on Wednesday night and pray every dime in? Yeah. How about passing the plate and get all of it in? You say, we ain't got no people. Well, that faith ain't got nothing to do with people. It's got That's right. That's right. Faith. you got to believe God. You believe God, God will do some things. I've had people tell me, they say, well, I wish I had the faith that such and such had. You already got it. Mm -hmm. Paul said, I live by the faith of the Son of God. That's more than Paul had. That's more than I got. If you live by the faith of the Son of God, you listen. I took a boat down to Lake Cherokee, and the first boat I got, we backed her down the water, and here come the game warden. Just like on Star Trek, he appeared out of nowhere. Y'all ever had that? Y'all here? <laughs> he come up and said, you got a gas motor on the back of that, I see. I said, yes, sir, it's back there. We're going to keep it stuck in the water, because if not, the back end of the boat does this whole time that trolling motor's going. He said, Really? He said, well, ain't no gas motors allowed on Lake Cherokee. I said, you don't want me to take that thing off, surely. I mean, I, I'm not, you know, I ain't Superman or nothing, pal. He said, no, but I do want you to unplug the gas lines. I said, okay, and I was thinking about that thing, and he said, you got a golf tee? I said, heavens no, I said, only centers play golf, hey, man. Ain't <laughs> golf and uh, he said, well, I happen to have a couple of my trucks, and he come back, and he stuck them things in my in gas lines, plugged them up where they couldn't be used. Yeah, I'm sitting there thinking about that, and I thought that's kind of like Galatians 2.20. Living by the faith of the Son of God, we unplug out our gas tanks and plug in the heavens. Yeah. Amen. i give you a hint which one will last longer between yours and that one. <laughs> Live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So we got faith, that's part of it. Then he says in verse 23, meekness. Meekness. Uh, Baptists and, and, and folks like us, especially human beings, have got a problem. We're the only people I know that can stretch that down. Mm. You know what meekness is? It's the opposite of that. Yeah. It's the opposite of that. Here it is, temperance. You know what temperance is? Control. Not self-control. If you look up the dictionary, it's going to say self-control. But temperance here has nothing to do with self at all. This all does with God's spirit. Yeah. I've had people ask me, they say, how do you stand it to do such and such? And listen, I weighed 275 pounds just a couple years ago. I was a tall and wide at the same time. I was almost like a complete circular thing. And I got to uh, I got to go to the doctor. He said, "You know your diabetes is going to kill you." I said, "You reckon there's anything we can fix that with?" He said, "I believe they are." He said, "You're going to have to live right, eat right, and take your medicine." So I went out and, and I used to make fun of people doing this, but you know the things you get. It's got a M T W T F S at the things. Mm -hmm. Now you ain't right with God if you ain't got one. Because I got one. <laughs> By the way, you know preachers are preaching against television. You know why? They can't afford cable. Look here. <laughs> So you put all that stuff in there, and I got my diabetes medicine in the morning and evening, I get up every morning, and I know I take it. Before I go to bed at night, I go in there, it's medicine time. Y'all y'all, y'all feel my pain, right? Y'all like Clinton, y'all feel my pain, right? Okay, so I take this stuff, and I do that, and the doctor says, you need to start exercising and eating right. And he goes and draws my blood and checks me out, so don't you go on this particular diet. And I thought, that sounds good, but he didn't mention ice cream anywhere in that diet. <laughs> Not even sugar free? So I asked him, I said, what about sugar-free cookies and sugar-free ice cream? You know what he says? He said, you know what sugar-free is? And I knew it was coming when he said it. I thought, that means I can't have it, probably. <laughs> he said, sugar-free means that the other, rather than using the main type of glucose, he said, there's dextrose, super, and he started naming off all these oses. He said, all them is just different types of sugar. I said, so in English, he said, you can't have none. I said, I got it. So I walked out of there, you know, depressed, you know, having to, probably had to eat some nerve pills after he told me all that, some depression medication. And I went out and I said, you know, Lord, it's kind of a hard thing to have, in, you know, I quit smoking cigarettes, quit drinking liquor, and all this other stuff, and quit being, said, all that stuff, you know, and repenting my sin, turning you said to me, Lord, all I had left was eating. That's all I had left. Now, Lord, it seems like you kind of want that too. Yeah. Lord said, I don't want you eating. 
I want you to let me control what you're doing. Amen. So every day I get up and pray, Lord, you know I'm going to run into some things. I'm going to drive by. I'm going to there'll be a Dairy Queen everywhere. Every time I go in, every time I look up, there's an ice cream sign, and, and I can smell Reese's cups through a pack. I can. First couple of weeks it bothered me. Then I began to notice something. The more I turn that over to him, the more he controls it. Amen. Now here's the blessing part of this. I need all the chicken I want. I'm a preacher, so therefore. <laughs> I have to call to preach because I know I crave chicken and I get all the chicken I want, so it's got to be at the Lord, right? <laughs> Amen. See, you got to you got to weigh these things out when you look at them, right? But in all seriousness, though, that temperance, that control, that's how you beat the thing. You don't beat it by saying, "Well, I'm gonna do Weight Watchers." Well, when you undo Weight Watchers, all the weight comes back. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna do this now. You, this is what you got to have: temperance. And he says this against such there's no law. What we say nine is in the Bible is the number of fruit for fruit or fruitfulness. So things that show up in nine will be fruitful, right? Say yes. That's a hint. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Amen. You want to produce fruit in your life? Taking in this book every day. Yep. Amen. Reading the Bible, studying the Bible, uh, memorizing the Bible, and living the Bible. But as they say, that's not all. Look at this one. Let's count again. Here it comes. Count with me out loud. One, One two, two, three, two, three four, four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight, eight nine. nine. Oh, man, that's a coincidence. Yeah, right. No. One time's an incident. Two times a coincidence. Three times a pattern. Let's see if we got any more. Let's see. There's one right there. There's our third one. Yep. That's when this Bible come out, right? All right. One plus six plus one plus one equals something. Nine. Amen. Amen. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Nine. Nine. Nine, nine. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. The word of God says, This book of law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to this word all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. That's the only time success is found in the Bibles in Joshua 1 8. As we, as we meditate on this thought, listen to this, as we meditate on this thought, if we meditate on day and night, we're going to have good success. It didn't say you'd be rich, but you would have good success. Mm -hmm. There's more success for poor people than there are rich people. You know how you know? How many poor people sit around at night worry about losing all their money? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know who Ted Turner is? The, the media mogul, Ted Turner. Ted Turner started that on WPCQ-TV 36 in Charlotte, North Carolina. He built that station up. And bought WTBS down in Atlanta. He bought that Channel 17 down there. And he jumped on cable television when it was an embassy, made a lot of money out there. Then he come up with this program and this thing and expanded that thing nationwide and became a billionaire. Yep. Uncle Teddy come along and Time Warner Cable come along and said, We want to buy into you what you're doing. In fact, we want to buy you. He said, okay, I'll do it, but I've got to be the chairman of the board. He said, okay, we'll let you have that job at least one year. Guess what happened to him on day 366? They fired him. So Uncle Teddy's been sitting around for the last few years. I read an article on him the other day.